The program of St. Louis Blues, originally scheduled for this time, has been canceled. With this simple announcement, CBS broadcaster Bob Trout launched what many regard as the coming of age of global electronic journalism. For the first time ever, as a world crisis unfolded, experts weighed in from remote points to analyze the events in real time. The date was Sunday, March 13, 1938. It had been 20 years since what they used to call the Great War, World War I, had ravaged Europe. And that weekend, the continent was once again on the verge of exploding. Nazi Germany had taken over Adolf Hitler's native country of Austria. Since the German troops crossed the Austrian border on the historic invasion last Friday, news has flowed across the Atlantic in a steady stream. For the first time ever, radio brought it all home to Americans, literally, through a special broadcast hastily put together by Edward R. Murrow and his colleagues at CBS and heard in Seattle on Cairo. And now Columbia begins its radio tour of Europe's capital cities with a transoceanic pickup from London. In American living rooms from coast to coast 75 years ago today, families gathered around their radios. First, they heard the voice of British Member of Parliament Ellen Wilkinson from London. You will be asking in America, why doesn't Britain do something? Why this strange paralysis in British politics? Well, first, no one in Britain wants war. From London, the roundup crossed the English Channel to France. Hello, America. This is Paris calling. Here is Edgar A. Maurer. With the invasion and conquest of Austria, the true nature of German policy has, in French eyes, become completely clear. Nazi Germany has thrown off the mask. From Berlin, journalist Pierre Huss spoke from the very heart of Nazi Germany. Popular German opinion in this respect can be summed up as follows. This is exclusively a German affair and does not concern anybody else. And finally, the roundup moved to ground zero of the crisis, with Ed Murrow reporting live from Nazi-occupied Austria. As I said, everything is quiet in Vienna tonight. There's a certain air of expectancy about the city, everyone waiting and wondering where and at what time Herr Hitler will arrive tomorrow. Few recall nowadays that Ed Murrow, perhaps the most famous broadcast journalist in American history, was raised in western Washington. Murrow grew up on a farm north of Mount Vernon in the community of Blanchard and graduated from what's now WSU in the early 1930s. But Murrow wasn't the only Northwest connection in that groundbreaking radio broadcast on Cairo 75 years and ago. And now in our studios in Washington, D.C., we're to hear now from the Honorable Louis B. Schwellenbach, Democratic Senator from the state of Washington. We cannot deny the fact that Adolf Hitler today is Europe's leader. We tremble at what he will do next. We know what will become of religious liberty in Austria, both for the Jews and the Catholics. It just will not exist. Before this historic broadcast, radio was mostly for entertainment, and people turned to newspapers for in-depth reporting and analysis. Murrow and his colleagues demonstrated that night the promise of radio. Throughout the coming years of World War II, they'd deliver on that promise again and again. But back on that Sunday in March 1938, there wasn't time to celebrate the milestone. Once the broadcast was over, word came almost immediately from CBS headquarters. They wanted Murrow to put together another one just like it for Monday. The Columbia Network has brought to American citizens a summary of European opinion presented from the capitals of Europe by shortwave radio across the Atlantic Ocean.